Hey everyone, Techni here with a review of the recently released gaming headset by Turtle Beach, the Stealth 600 Gen 2. So as far as in your box, you can get a packet full of paperwork, your warranty information, quick start guide, and some stickers, a USB-C charging cable, your wireless dongle, and by the way, talking Gen 2, as you can see, the dongle is reduced in size rather than being like real big stick right there. And then of course, you're gonna get your headset. All right, so you all know where we have to start, and that is gonna be with comfort, because no matter how great they sound, or how good of a deal they are, if they're not comfortable, we're gonna take them right off. Gosh, I haven't done that in so long, you know? It, it just felt good to do it again. I gotta bring it back. You know, I need to make some shirts with that. I just I just love that phrase right there. But anyways, as far as comfort on the Stealth 600 Gen 2 here, plenty of adjustment. As you can see, they click out there, you got little numbers, and they hold their notch very good, so they don't just budge on you. As far as your ear cups, full swivel, a little bit forward there, and they go totally flat right there. And if you wanna lay them on your chest, really nice, because again, they're gonna fit any head shape right there. Ear cups also go in and out just a little bit, and they don't clank in there. If you look really far inside there, you can see a little rubber notch in there, so they kind of go back there and sit back nicely rather than getting this plastic clanky sound around there. So as far as adjustment, really, really nice. Now, whenever we put them on our head right here, the clamping force, is right at medium, maybe a pinch over medium. Just a pinch over medium right there. Not saying they're tight by any means, but again, they do stay there. As you see, I move like this and they budge just a squeeze. Nothing major by any means. So again, not tight, not loose, a little bit right above medium right there. They still feel very nice. And as far as the ear cushions here, they're very plush, they really are. Pleather on the inside, cloth on the outside right there, so they really lock that sound in. But now when we look at these ear cushions, the shape of them is just funky, you know what I mean? And it's really got to suit that perfect ear shape because again, you got the peak of your ear right there and then it's going to sit in there instead of it being a complete oval or round or whatever, you know? And for me, whenever I kept putting them on my head, I used to have to kind of get them here, shake them around a little bit, kind of get my ear tucked into them, you know what I mean? If I didn't do that, if I just took them, bam, slapped them on, they would pinch the tips of my ears right there. Again, due to that funky shape right there. So that's a little bit of a stinker. Is that just me? I'm not too sure. We all know comfort is a big personal preference, you know? But again, the weird shape of the ear cushions is a little bit of a bummer. Now the ear cushions can be taken off as well, quite easy and put back on pretty easy as well, even though it looks kind of funky with that shape and then that lip at the bottom. But I don't think we're gonna be able to put some replacement ear cushions on here because again, that shape of the ear cushion is actually the shape of the ear cup there as well. Again, it's not just a solid circle or a solid oval there. And as far as the headband, very soft and plush up here. You don't really feel it digging in the top of your head or anything, nice and cozy headband. So all in all, as far as comfort, I would put it as questionable. Again, the ear cushions are the only turn off for me. Again, because you can't just slap on. You kind of got to get in there and kind of tuck your ears up into it. At least for me. I keep saying for me because we all know our ears are going to be a little bit different. But again, the shape of the ear cushions is just the only questionable thing. But other than that, like I said, when you get them on your head, medium clamp for force, and they are pretty cozy. I mean, you can game for a long time. Ears aren't really sweating in here. Pretty cozy. Now, talking about the build of the headset, it is pretty much all plastic. I don't even know if I say pretty much. Everything that I can see is plastic. But like I stated before, that's not a bad thing. I would always take a lightweight headset over a heavy duty, just completely metal headset. You know what I mean? And this headset here comes in at underneath one pound. That's very nice for a wireless headset. Again, because I'm all about that comfort. But everything has to go along with it. So talking about it being all plastic right here, take a look at this. this you know I like doing my stress tests, right? And I bend them and twist them up. Check this out. Like you can twist this whole thing up here and that plastic just rolls. Like that is stinking awesome up there. You know, it just, wow. I mean, you hear it creaking a little bit cause I'm really twisting the heck out of it, but you don't have to worry about that headband. But there is one thing that does worry me here. And I don't know if this is just me looking ahead. Again, I'm twisting them and bending them here and everything. But as far as the plastic adjustment that comes out and attaches right to the uh, arm of the ear cup, it's just a piece of plastic attached in there. And that's where I feel like we're getting a stress point. It's right there, again, going that bracket right before the ear cup. Not necessarily that joint where you get that swivel going in the ear cup, but right before it. It's not like a separate piece, it's one piece from that plastic and then into that little connecting piece right there, as you can see. So again, I just kind of feel like over time, we might get a little bit of stress and a little bit of wear right there. I don't know, it's just me speculating here, you know? But again, that's where I feel like a lot of the stress is going, right there on that one 
piece of plastic. So as far as features and functions on the headset, on the back left ear cup here, as you can see, you have your volume wheel and then your chat wheel, which you can control, again, your volume or your chat volume separately right there. And these wheels are like uh, rubber and they're very firm in there. Not very firm, but they do have some grip in there. Right below that, you have your mode button, which you can cycle through your standard Turtle Beach uh, signature sound bass mode, treble and bass mode, and then voice mode, which is gonna control pretty much your bass and your highs between each set in there. Right below that, you have your power button, and you can also press this while they're powered on, press that power button, and you're gonna activate that Turtle Beach that superhuman sound. And then underneath it, you have USB-C charging, which you can charge these while you're using them, but unfortunately, the cable that comes with the headset is mighty short, so again, I don't think that cable is gonna work whenever you're charging, but if you have your own long USB-C cable, it does work in here, that's what I did, and again, they do charge while they're using them. While they're charging, the light will blink right there. Whenever they're done charging, the light will go off. And then right on the front, you have your flip down to mute mic or flip up to mute mic. Now let's go ahead and dive into using them and then we'll roll right into sound right there. Again, they are wireless and you use a little wireless dongle right here. By the way, the wireless works on Mac, PS4, and PC. No Xbox here, right? Forgot one. It can also be used on the Nintendo Switch wirelessly while it's docked. But again, they did reduce the size of this dongle so you don't have this massive thing sticking out of your console. It's not too small where you can't really get it out. You know, perfect size right here. As far as pairing them up for wireless, just put the dongle in whatever device you're using, power up the headset, give it about a second or two, and then it will actually pair up for you. You don't have to hold any sort of button down or anything like that automatically pairs. And they're stating you get up to 15 hours of battery life with this headset. I'm sure that's dependent on volume, then whatever features that you have activated on it right there. All of my game sessions has never died on me. Again, when I'm not using my wireless products, whatever they are, my keyboard, whatever, I just charge them at night and then use them the next day, whatever I'm gaming. But again, throughout my sessions, which can be quite long sometimes, <laughs> this guy never died on me. All right, so now let's go to talk about sound. And the Stealth 600 Gen 2s are using 50 millimeter drivers in the frequency range of 20 to 20,000 which is what we see in a lot of gaming headsets, right? But again, we're using wireless, so they are powered. And if y'all watched me before, and I recommend a lot of headsets, Arctic 7 or something like that, they're all right around that way. But again, when you jump into a wireless headset with that range and everything being powered, you definitely get a lot more punch out of them. And that is what I got out of these. I got that punch on every platform. Again, Nintendo Switch, Dock, by the way, on the Mac, PC, which was the majority of my time again, or PS4. I got that punch with them. And the cool thing about it is, again, with the modes back there, right? Kind of think of that mode as just a quick EQ setting, right? Turtle Beach signature sound, which is kind of, I don't know if I want to say flat, because it is detailed. But again, you kind of got that basic sound. Then you got bass and treble, which is self-explanatory, right? Bass, again, self-explanatory. And then voice. And think of voice as more like a high boost, right? So again, there's multiple options for you to choose from as far as the base mode one thing that just really made me giddy testing these guys i was playing a lot of call of duty right and i put on the base mode and the thing started shaking not like i mean you know as a base hit right i forget what it was a kill streak or something coming over and when that base hit it actually rumbled you know it wasn't like this dirty just muddy base it was a hard hit base that just again i felt it vibrate on my head it was just so awesome and so immersive sounds corny you know what i mean but it was really cool and made me giddy because again it wasn't dirty it was a solid hit and it was really cool but again i prefer the bass in treble boost right there just because it's balanced i get the environment i get some bass you don't get that real rumbly bass like in the bass mode like i was just talking about but you still do get that bass the gunshots are very very thumpy so again between the settings right there you get to pick what you want out of all of them and again it's nice to have the options now jumping down to that power button as i stated earlier where you can just press it and get the superhuman sound if you used any other turtle Beach headsets, you're pretty familiar with that. I've stated in all of my other Turtle Beach headsets, I am not a fan of it. I don't like it at all. Pretty much what it is, they call it superhuman sound. It's pretty much like 7.1 that other headset companies uh, will call it, right? That's pretty much exactly what it does. It reduces all your sounds right there and brings out the highs, like your mids, your bass, and everything is just off in the distance. And then you got these highs and it sounds incredibly goofy i don't i don't think it gives me any sort of advantage let me tell you what me using the bass and treble mode i mean i could hear the footsteps from any direction in that bass and treble mode whether they're behind me to the side of me or even coming up in front of me from some sort of direction i actually heard them it, it was so cool again with the detail and immersion of it again getting all in there with the headset being with that basic frequency range of 20 to 20,000. You all know I prefer mine, again, having a little bit bigger of a range, but getting that kind of sound from these 
was pretty stinking nice. So as far as gaming, I loved them. I thought they were great for, again, whatever situation, whether it be a story, a campaign, immersion, you know, or a, a, a multiplayer competitive shooter. I feel like they really suit both of those situations right there. But when we jump over into listening to music with them, you all know I'm a huge fan of music, right? These guys, they had two different areas, right? Like if you're listening to hip hop, EDM, dubstep, anything like that, really kind of hard hitting, kind of aggressive music. I don't know what we want to call it, right? It, it sounded good. There was a lot of body to it. It was very full. And again, you just, you got into the music. But when we came over here to like rock or alternative or whatever, I've been really hooked on Cage the Elephant lately. And listening to some of that stuff, I really kind of felt like I was in front, like, how would I say that? Like, right in front of the stage at a show or something, you know what I mean? Where you got that full body, but you're kind of missing some of the detail. Like, you could still hear the detail, but it was definitely in the background. It wasn't as potent, you know what I mean? So that was a little bit of a stinker there. So as far as music, again, depending on genre right there, is where they will suit. Now, one other thing talking about sound that is a little bit of a stinker here, and we've seen this in a lot of wireless headsets these days, and I hope it stops and they kind of go back to it, you know what I mean? They're all removing that 3.5 port right there. Again, these are wireless and you can charge them while you're gaming, so you don't really have to worry about that. But again, if you're on the road, you, you lose your battery, you just wanna plug it into your phone or your switch or something like that, talking about switch in portable mode, you know what I mean? There's no 3.5, that's just a stinker. I wish these headset companies would start including that again, because that is a minor feature, but a great feature. All right, so we are now using a microphone on the Turtle Beach Stealth 600 Gen 2s right here. As you can see, it is flipped down and flip up to mute. And the cool thing about it is if you just flip it up halfway, it's gonna mute. And I'm gonna do that right now, see if we get any noise. So I don't see much coming up on the screen as far as that noise, but it's cool because you can just flip it halfway. If you just want to get a quick mute, you know, someone comes in your room, you just got to talk to them real quick. You don't got to flip the mic all the way up, just halfway there and it will mute and then you can bring it back down. The other cool thing about the mic, and I have it all the way out right now, but you can tilt it in. So I just tilted in right now. I'm not sure if it sounds any different, but now it is tilted in a little bit closer to my mouth. I'm going to tilt it back out just to see if we can hear a difference. So now we are tilted back out here. Again, not sure if we can hear a difference, but we're testing right here together. So again, the microphone is really cool. It does seem a little bit shorter, but I love how it's not right in your vision when you're gaming. And I already listened to one recording back on this mic. And in my opinion, it sounds stinking solid. All right, so what did y'all think about that mic test there? Again, I listened to the playback right after I recorded. And by the way, when I do my mic test, I don't do any sort of adjustment in software or on my device right there. I take the headset, plug it in and record. I don't go into any settings and adjust anything like that. Again, it's straight out the box, plugged and played. And this microphone, in my opinion, sounds so stinking good. It's just like a phone call or whatever. It's just natural, it's balanced, and it's right there. I loved it. All right, so let's go to wrap up this review on the Turtle Beach Stealth 600 Gen 2 gaming headset here. By the way, this also comes in a white version. It's like white and gray. And then also comes in a Xbox version, which that blue line is gonna be green, of course, for Xbox. The white version is for PS4 as well. Um, but anyways, all those variations in this one we're talking about right here comes in at 100 bucks. And I really think it's worth it. It's sitting at that great spot. 100 bucks for a wireless headset is great. And that's pretty much where wireless headsets start. Sometimes you can find them around 80 bucks or something, but 100 bucks for what we have right here, I think is great. Again, the couple things that question me are the ear cushions, which I can go on and on to say personal preference. The thing I tell you is put them on your head and see how they feel. Again, for me, I had to move around a little bit to get them on my ears comfortably. So that's a little bit of stinker. Again, I wish they were a solid oval right there. As far as the other piece on the headband, only time can tell. I'm just jumping ahead saying that eh, it feels like I'm getting a little bit of pressure right there. I don't know. It is thick. It is solid. I twisted the heck out of it. It didn't break. But again, only time will tell with something like that. So those couple things I wish were different. But again, that some of it can be personal preference and then over time. By the way, talking about those things, the ear cushions and then that headband right there, the uh, Stealth 700 Gen 2s, I believe, are coming up shortly. And I will be covering those as well. And by the looks of them online and everything, it looks like it's pretty much correcting those couple questions I have right there. But I don't know, you're gonna have to subscribe and hit that notification bell to catch that and see if it does correct those. But right now, talking about the 600 Gen 2s, I do like where they're sitting at the $100 price range. Nice, punchy sound. I like our option here. But anyways, thank you so much for stopping by and watching my review on a Turtle Beach Stealth 600 Gen 2 wireless game and headset. Hot tamale, that's a mouthful right there. But I hope I answered some questions if you're looking into this headset right here, and I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, hit that thumbs up, and don't forget to subscribe for some future tech videos. Hey, I hope I catch you in the next one. Bye now.